Welcome to the deep dive. Today, we're looking beyond our solar system, uh, way beyond, into a real celestial head scratcher. Yeah, something that's really making astronomers pause and, well, rethink things. We've got some truly strange observations, some cutting edge data, and frankly, some wild theories to unpack. It's definitely one for the books. Our focus today is an object called 3i TLAS. Now that 3i is key. It means it's only the third interstellar object we've ever confirmed. Which already makes it incredibly rare, a visitor from another star system. And what makes this super current is that it was spotted by the very large telescope, the VLT, just this past August, 2025. So we're talking brand new insights here. Hot off the presses, basically, from one of the best telescopes we have. But here's the kicker, the really bizarre part. There's this theory gaining traction that the surface of 3i Atlas, well, it might be acting like a convex mirror. A convex mirror, yeah. I mean, think about that. An interstellar comet, basically a chunk of ice and rock from deep space reflecting light like, like a polished lens. It sounds almost artificial, doesn't it? But that's what some of the data seems to hint at. And this convex mirror idea isn't just pulled out of thin air, right? It ties directly into something the VLT actually saw. Exactly. It connects to this very peculiar visual phenomenon. The telescope pick up 3i ALS, reflecting sunlight with these strange, distinct red and green color patterns. Red and green. That doesn't sound like your average comet reflection. Not at all. Comets usually scatter sunlight more broadly. These specific colors, combined with the mirror idea, well, it forces the big question. Is this just a comet behaving in a super weird but natural way we haven't seen? Or is it something else? Something fundamentally different? Precisely. Something more mysterious. That's the core puzzle. So that's our journey for this deep dive. We're going to unpack the facts, look at the observations from VLT, bring in some Hubble data analysis too. And explore the speculation because there's definitely some fascinating speculation here. And as we go, you know, think about it yourself. What could possibly make an interstellar object reflect light like a giant curved red and green mirror? What's your gut feeling? Okay, so 3i Atlas being interstellar, that's already huge. It's from out there. How does that fact specifically make this surface mystery even, well, more mysterious? Well, the interstellar part really amps things up. Yeah. Because it means it didn't form with our sun, mm. right? It comes from a totally different environment. But what does the convex mirror theory actually imply about its shape? What does that mean physically? Okay, so a convex mirror, unlike a flat one or a concave one that focuses light, always spreads light out, diverges it. Like the back of a spoon, sort of. Exactly like that, yeah. So for 3 Alice to do this, its surface isn't just reflective. It has to be scattering light in that specific wide angle way, which implies uh, a surprisingly uniform curve. Uniformly curved. And smooth. And smooth, yes. At least on a large scale. That's the implication. But comets aren't like that, are they? I mm -hmm. thought they were meant to be lumpy, irregular, yeah. dirty snowballs. That's the standard picture, definitely. A nucleus of ice, rock, dust. Really rough, porous. As it nears a star, ice turns to gas sublimation, creating the coma, the tail. And that process would leave the surface even rougher, presumably. You'd expect it to, yes. Very uneven. It would scatter light, sure, but chaotically, diffusely. Not in this organized, diverging pattern like a convex mirror. So this observation really throws a wrench in the works for standard comet models. It absolutely does. It's a major deviation from what we expect based on the comets in our own system. Okay, so if it's not typical sublimation, what kind of natural process, even a really weird one, could possibly create a smooth, curved, mirror-like surface on a comet? Especially one that's traveled between stars. That is the million dollar question, isn't it? Yeah. It's a huge puzzle. Yeah. Uh, people are floating some pretty out there ideas. Like what? Well, maybe some unique type of cryovolcanism. Imagine, instead of rough gas jets, maybe a very fluid, low viscosity slush erupted and froze incredibly smoothly, like a glaze. A frozen glaze on a comet. Possibly. Or perhaps its long journey through space did something. Flying through a dense dust cloud, maybe or getting hit by an extreme stellar wind over ages could theoretically polish it. Like sandblasting, but with space dust or particles. Sort of, yeah. But you'd need very specific conditions for a very long time to get that kind of uniformity and curvature. We're also thinking about how it formed in its home system. Could it have formed differently from the start? Perhaps. Maybe with layers of exotic minerals that just happened to crystallize into a smooth outer shell. Each idea is really pushing the boundaries of you know, cometary science. But hang on, could it just be old, like really weathered, 
An interstellar object has been out there for potentially billions of years, exposed to different kinds of radiation. Could that alone create something that looks like a convex mirror, even if it isn't perfectly smooth? That's a really important point. You always try for the simplest explanation first, even if it's an extreme version of normal. Weathering, radiation processing, definitely things to consider. So it might not need to be perfectly polished? Well, the issue is the specificity of the reflection. The VLT data isn't just saying it's bright or it's smooth. It's suggesting a scattering profile that closely matches convex geometry. Ah, okay. So just being generally smooth or weathered might not be enough to explain that specific light pattern. Probably not. To get that consistent divergence of light, you'd need a remarkable uniformity in curvature over a big chunk of the surface. It's not just about being glossy, it's the shape. That consistent curve is what's really tough to explain with just weathering. Okay, so we have this potentially smooth convex surface. Let's talk about those colors. What do the specific red and green patterns tell us? Why those colors? Right, the colors are maybe the most intriguing part because we're not just talking a reddish tint or a greenish glow. The VLT has powerful tools, spectroscopy. That's like breaking down the light into its component wavelengths, like a fingerprint. Exactly. It allowed astronomers to pinpoint very specific wavelengths of red and green light being reflected, not just general color, but precise frequencies. That precision is critical. And why is that different from normal comets? Well, a typical comet scatters sunlight across a broad spectrum. You might get some blue from dust or specific emission lines if there's gas glowing in the coma. But these sharp red and green reflections seemingly coming from the surface itself, that's unusual. So what could cause that? A few possibilities, all pretty exotic for a comet. Down there. One idea is interference patterns. Interference, like, like you see on a soap bubble or an oil slick? that iridescent shimmer. Precisely like that. It's called thin film interference. It happens when light reflects off the top and bottom surfaces of a very thin, transparent layer. So 3IA Teles might have a thin, uniform coating on its surface. If it's interference, yes. It would imply an incredibly smooth, maybe layered structure at the microscopic level. Mm. A uniform film, maybe just nanometer thick, totally unlike the usual jumbled mix of ice and dust on a comet nucleus. Wow. That sounds almost manufactured. It does sound very <laughs> structured, which is why it's so puzzling naturally. Another possibility is the material itself. Different minerals? Maybe. Highly ordered crystals of some exotic compounds we don't typically find in our own comets. Certain crystal structures can absorb and reflect very specific wavelengths. So minerals native to its home star system. Could be. Or even stranger, maybe some kind of fluorescence. Certain materials can absorb high-energy light, like ultraviolet from the sun, and then re-emit it as visible light. And in this case, re-emitting it specifically as red and green. To get those dominant colors would point to very specific chemical compounds on the surface reacting to the sunlight in a very particular way. Okay, smooth convex surface reflecting specific red and green light. This is where the interstellar part really kicks in, doesn't it? How does coming from outside our solar system open up the possibilities here? This is where it gets really exciting, yeah, because almost everything we know about comets is based on the ones born here in our solar system. Formed from the same cloud of gas and dust that made Earth and Jupiter and everything else. Right, but 3i8 lace comes from a different stellar nursery. That nursery could have had a totally different chemical recipe. Different ingredients available when it was forming. Exactly. Maybe more heavy elements or a different mix of ices and volatile compounds. Things like nitrogen ice, carbon monoxide ice, maybe complex hydrocarbons could have been much more common there. And those different materials could form structures or crystals with these weird optical properties. That's the idea. Imagine a comet made primarily of something we consider exotic here. It could naturally form a surface that reflects light in this strange red and green convex way simply because its fundamental composition is different. So its weirdness might just be normal for where it came from. It's possible. It's like uh, finding a rock on Mars that looks completely alien compared to Earth rocks. It forces us to realize that our local experience isn't the universal rule. That really broadens the scope, doesn't it? It's not just a weird comet. It could be a sample of completely different planetary chemistry. Absolutely. It challenges our models of how planetary systems form everywhere. Yeah. What kinds of building blocks are out there? What variety exists? We're literally looking at a piece of another star's history. And the implications go beyond just geology, right? If materials are so different. Well, yeah. It makes you wonder about environments for life, too. If other systems can produce objects this unique, what does that mean for the potential for unique habitats elsewhere? 
it's profound. Let's talk about the data gathering. How did the VLT and Hubble work together on this? You mentioned both. Yeah, using multiple instruments is key for something this complex. The VLT, with its spectroscopy and adaptive optics, which sharpened the view, gave us that initial high-detail fingerprint of the light. Pinpointing the exact red and green wavelengths. Right. That spectral data is what drives the theories about interference or specific minerals. It tells us how the light is interacting with the surface material. Okay, so VLT tells us what the light is doing. What does Hubble add? Hubble brings incredible sharpness in images, spatial resolution. While VLT dissects the light's properties, Hubble helps us see where that light is coming from on the comet. It helps map its shape, its morphology. So Hubble could potentially see if the surface actually looks curved and smooth. That's the goal. The Hubble data analysis mentioned in our sources would be used to try and visually confirm the shape inferred from the VLT's light scattering data. See if it matches that convex profile. Got it. So VLT gives the spectral Y. Hubble gives the structural where. A powerful combo. Definitely. It lets you connect the dots between the light properties and the physical object. So what are the next big questions now? What do scientists need to figure this out? More observations? Oh, absolutely. Follow-up is crucial. They'll want more detailed spectroscopy, maybe looking at different wavelengths like infrared or UV to hunt for other chemical clues. See if other parts of the spectrum show anomalies. Exactly. And watching it over time is important too. As its orientation changes relative to us and the sun, does that convex mirror effect change? Is it the whole surface or just one part? And longer term, could we ever, like, visit it? A flyby mission would be the dream, of course. Get close-up pictures, analyze the material directly. But that's incredibly difficult for an interstellar object moving so fast on its way out. Yeah, catching it would be tough. Very tough. Yeah. So for now, it's about gathering every photon we can from Earth and space telescopes, refining the models, and trying to rule possibilities in or out. Each new piece of data helps. It really is like decoding a message from another star system, isn't it? It feels that way. This isn't just an oddball comet. It could be a Rosetta Stone for understanding how things work elsewhere in the galaxy. Okay, let's try and wrap our heads around this. We've been diving deep into 3i Atlas, this interstellar visitor presenting a huge puzzle. A puzzle centered on that bizarre convex mirror theory. Right, the idea that its surface is somehow smooth and curved, scattering light in this very specific diverging way. And then layered on top of that, those strange, distinct red and green color patterns in the reflected sunlight. Which hint at maybe exotic materials or weird surface physics like thin film interference. Things you just don't expect on a comet. And all this backed by fresh data from the VLT, as recent as August 2025, plus analysis using Hubble. It's really pushing our understanding. Challenging what we thought a comet, especially an interstellar one, could be like. Yeah, and it's so important to remember that the question is still wide open. Is it a normal comet pushed to an extreme we haven't seen? Or is it truly something more mysterious? That uncertainty is where the excitement is, I guess. Absolutely. This is science happening in real time. When observations stretch our theories to the breaking point, that's when we learn the most. The universe keeps reminding us it's full of surprises. It's humbling, really. It is, and it makes you think, doesn't it? What does interstellar truly signify? This object carries the fingerprint of another star's creation process. A completely different origin story. Exactly. And when something that different arrives, how do our tools, our ideas, even our imagination cope? How do we interpret these strange reflections? What other secrets are locked away in these interstellar messengers? Are there maybe lots of objects like this out there and we're just starting to see them? That's a huge question. We might be seeing just the tip of the iceberg of cosmic diversity. Wow, what a trip exploring 3ILS today. It really shows how dynamic the universe is, constantly throw us these curveballs. Yeah, keeps us on our toes. Definitely keep pondering these mysteries. The universe has plenty more secrets waiting. Until next time. Keep looking up and keep exploring.